Hello everyone, this is Diane Elkins with eLearning Uncovered. When designing your Slides and Articulate storyline, you may be using background images where you want the background to, well, fade into the background. So you can give your foreground more emphasis. For example, you might want this title to be more prominent, or want this list to be more readable, or make this character pop a little bit. Well, there are a lot of ways you can do it. You could potentially use color effects to make your foreground stand out. You might also want to make your background a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. Or you might want to use a blur effect. So that's a couple of ways you might work with your background images to help make the foreground pop. When I'm designing, I like to use built-in storyline features if I can get the effect I want. So for example, with this slide, I can go right to this image, go to format, and I can play with some of the color effects right here, built in, and find something that I like directly from within storyline. Or perhaps with this object right here, I can add a shape and put that here on my slide and then put it between my text and my background and I can make it white with some transparency and if I wanted to I could make that a gradient so that you see the image a little bit more. Anyway, there's a lot I can do directly within Storyline. So why do I prefer to do these things in Storyline when I can? Well, because it's easier to change my mind later. I can quickly uh, come back in later and say, hey, you know, this is too dark or this is too bright. What if we um, also made it a little bit darker? Uh, yeah, I like that better. So I can come back later. Ooh, that's too dark. <laughs> anyway, I can come back later and change my mind. So that's one of the advantages of using Storyline. Plus, I can also create efficiencies. You know, I could copy and paste this white box over and over, or maybe I could even set it up in um, master slides. So a lot of advantages there. But for this blur effect, I can't create a blur directly in Storyline. I have to go to external software. But if I use the media library in Storyline 360 and a simple photo editing tool like Snagit, I can create this effect in just a few seconds with what's called round trip editing. So what is round trip editing? It means you can go do something in another application without having to completely leave this one and go separately to that one. So the first thing I need to do is find the image. Let me go back to my unblurred image. I need to find the image in the, the media library. So I can go to view and media library and get there, or there's this little shortcut, which is especially good if you have a larger course with lots of images. Right click the image and say show in media library pulls it up and puts that um, item right there in focus so it's selected already. Then over here I have an edit button and when I click it, it will show me every image related software I have on my computer. So I could go right to Photoshop from here or in this case I could just go to Snagit. Snagit has a blur feature. So I say edit this in Snagit and it pulls that up automatically in Snagit. So I go to blur which gives me a crosshairs I'll click and drag, and it looks like I missed the corner a little bit, so I can uh, adjust these corners and get it just the way I want. And with that blur object selected, I can go over here and say, well, do I want 50%, 75%, or I can use the slider. Let's say I like 75%. And then I click Save. And then when I go back to Storyline and close out, there it is. It's blurred. So the beauty of round trip editing is that you don't have to right click, uh, export this picture, save it as a picture. Now go to Snagit, open it in Snagit, uh, make my changes, save it in Snagit, come back here, replace my picture. It just makes it that much easier that you can do right click, show in media library, edit in Snagit, save it. And so you, you do, you save a lot of steps. It makes it just a few seconds to be able to do this. Now, a couple of notes. I do lose my cropping when I use this method. So I would have to go back now and uh, recrop my image to match the way I want. It would still have any timing effects or any transitions or fade in or fade out, but it does lose the cropping. Another thing to keep in mind when you use this method, 
Uh, I could do an undo right now, but if I come back in three days, uh, I can't just do reset picture and put it back the way it was. It is it is changing it within storyline, so I'd have to reinsert this picture if I wanted to go back to the original look. Also, if I have this image in multiple places in storyline, it would update the image in all of those places. So you do need to make sure that you understand the dynamics of how the media library works. So when you're trying to play with some of your background effects, consider what it is you can do directly in Storyline, and that might save you some time and give you some flexibility uh, in the future. Or just go to your media library and use your round trip editing options to quickly make the effects that you want.